If you place a wooden board on four pillars, you can use it for shade and shelter, but this structure is unstable and will collapse in a storm. So you cut grooves into the pillars and set a beam across them. Now the beam can't move up or down, but it can still slide sideways. You cut more grooves into both the beam and the pillars, add another beam to lock the structure in place, and the pillars and beams finally hold each other tightly. Yet the wood at the top of the pillars has been carved away, making them easy to break. To fix this, you bring in a larger block of wood, carve grooves into it, and call it a dough. But when the building expands, the longer beams start to bend. That still doesn't stop you. You place a curved wooden piece between the beam and the dough, calling it a gong. It looks like a drawn bow, spreading the weight outward, increasing support, and effectively shortening the beam. But a single gong is easy to break, so you stack dough and gong again and again, interlocking them like clasped fingers. Congratulations, you've invented the dugong. As the structure grows, the eaves extend farther, and the outermost gong begins to sag. So you insert a long wooden strip into the dugong, with its front end gripping the eaves and its back end pressing down on the inner structure. Relying on its slanted angle and the weight above, it forces the drooping eaves back up, and you name it the ang. Now the dao, the gong, and the ang lock together point by point, tightening under pressure without a single nail. Finally, you run a beam through them all, turning separate pieces into a unified frame. And that's when you realize the secret behind ancient buildings that have stood for a thousand years. The dugong holds up not just the roof, but the ancient wisdom of using softness to overcome strength.